So, you know, going throughout the week and thinking about this um, the fact that I like to do things for people. But all through my life, I have done things for people. And there's, I would say, the majority of the things I've done for people. Right? 
Because a lot of people live that way. They, they raise their children, like, do not use bad language, but you know what goes out of their mouth every single sentence? Bad language. Okay? So the, the Bible teaches us that, you know, in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, is we should be teaching the ways of the Lord from the time that we wake up to, as we go along the way and as we get ready for bed, is when we need to instruct them. And, and I think it's more of how you live your life to glorify God so that people will see what you do. You understand that? So these Pharisees, they tie up heavy covers of loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Now, some of you probably been in churches where, you know, you got these leaders that keep on pointing finger and, and telling you how bad you are. How many of you had experienced that before? But then you find out that they're not the great leaders that they profess to be because they're not in sin themselves. I mean, if you look for sin in people's lives, can you find it? Absolutely. Is that easy? Huh? It, it shouldn't be easy for us to find, especially in leaders, the sin in their lives. But we, because they're human, they have sin in their lives, and it's easy to find it. And these leaders tend to want to hide that sin. And they will try to make you feel bad so they look better. How many of you maybe have done that yourself? It is to point out other people's faults so that you don't look so bad. We've all, we're all guilty of that problem, huh? Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide, tassels on their garments long. They love to place some honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you all are brothers and sisters. Okay? You know. Some people will call you something out of respect. Like a lot of people will call me pastor. In fact, people that when I go around walking down in the community, people call me pastor. Sometimes I okay. <laughs> now who is this? He's calling me pastor. But see, the thing is that if you're doing it to get the respect from people because you're kind of want to have this thing like look at me and people don't lie. And guess what? And you got your glory. Because that's what you want. You want glory, right? But the thing is that it's it's really hard to have humility. When people are that, oh you know, you're a good boy. You do all good things. But that's why it's important that we redirect in what we do to glorify God. Because really, if, if it wasn't for God, would I really be doing the good things to serve other people? He says, and do not, what does do not mean? Huh? Don't do it, right? Do not call anyone earth father. For you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to 
be called instructor, to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves, look who I am, right? Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. You see, the thing is that sometimes in our mind, our concept of what we do is opposite from what is the reality of what we should be doing and why we should be doing it. So here's Jesus. Now, he's in the midst of these Pharisees and teachers of law. He says, whoa! Okay, you might not really understand this word, whoa. So what does woe mean? Stop. Oh. Huh? I assume stop. What? Stop. 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 I can't hear you. Stop. Hey, I got my hearing. Stop. <laughs> Quit. Stop. Do it. Whoa! Quit. Not at all. He's saying, I'm giving you a warning. Teachers of the law and Pharisees. Now you understand this word, hypocrites. You hypocrites! In fact, just recently I talked to someone and I invited her to church. She goes, The reason why I don't go to church is because they're a bunch of hypocrites. hypocrites. You know what I'd like to say to that person? Well, then don't join that church because you know what? People that come to church come because they have sinned in their lives. What better place for them, them to be? You see, some churches will just say, you know, we don't want your kind in our church. Why? Because they're the outcasts. They're the sinners. Now, if you read and study the scriptures about Jesus and the people that he associated with, that he ministered to, let's see, one of them was a prostitute. <laughs> one was a tax collector. What are some of the other ones that he associated with? Jews. Huh? It's the Gentiles, the, the Samaritans, right? I mean, that's who Jesus is. He ministered also to the Pharisees, but they didn't want to listen to what he had to say. He said, you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. It's just like, you slam the door in someone's face. You don't want them to enter into the kingdom of God, so you shut them out. Is that what they're doing? How are, how are the Pharisees shutting these people out by their actions? You yourselves do not enter, nor will you enter, uh, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Both of you teachers of the law and Pharisees, he, okay, he said again, you hypocrites. Now, if you can imagine what it was like to be a Pharisee and hearing someone call you a hypocrite, what do you think was happening to those Pharisees? Were they humbled by that? Huh? No, what was going on? They, they got pretty angry at Jesus. Call him out. He said, you travel over land and sea, you win to win a single convert. And, and when you have succeeded, succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. Whoa, watch out, you blind guys. You say, if any, anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing, but anyone who swears by the gold in the temple is bound to that oath. You blind fools. I thought Jesus said you shouldn't call anybody a fool. Well, why is he calling them a fool? Because that's what they are. You blind fool. 
most which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You also say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing, but anyone who swears by the gift of the altar is bound to that oath, you blind men. Which is greater, the gift or the altar? That makes, us, makes the gift sacred. Therefore, if anyone swears by the altar, swears by it, and by everything on it. So, everything that they do is done for people to see. Ooh, 